Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction, and this is Miscellaneous Myths Loki's Wager by the channel Oli Sarcastic Production. Loki, 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 when will you learn that your actions have consequences? Alternate title Haircut Prank Gone Wrong. <laughs> really? Haircut Prank Gone Wrong. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. So, this is Loki was basically doing things that was, you know. Uh, yeah, he's uh, basically god of mischiefs or whatever. They should make more, you know, movies on based on Loki because it, it would be fun, man. This is gonna be a fun video. Only Sarkasty Production is a great channel. I love how they, you know, animate things. Uh, you know, Red's humor is awesome too. I guess Red's job is to, you know, talk about all these myths, and Blue is, I guess, more historical stuff. Clearly, this myths myths videos gets more view than anything else. So yeah, it's fun. Remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast for all the playlists like all the sarcastic products and reactions, something like that. I've read through, uh, you know, 10, 15 videos already. Uh, check out other playlists too, like CGP Grey, Real Life Floor, Entire Story and Curse Gazard, things like that. Yeah, that's was this one. Norse mythology is a little frustrating to research. We only really have two sources to draw on. There's the Poetic Edda, which is a collection of anonymous Old Norse poems, and the Prose Edda, which was written in Iceland by Snorri Sturluson. And both of them date to at least a century after the region was fully Christianized. And while there's a lot of content in these Eddas, the fact that- Well, that's it. So all the knowledge we have about all these Aesir's, uh, Odin, Thor, and everything is from these two books only. And after Christianizing the area. Okay. I thought there would be more old text somewhere that told us all that. None of it is pre-Christian has frustrated researchers for centuries because Damn. it can be very hard to tell how much of it is original and how much of it is a Christian edition. For instance, there's a very jarring segment. Maybe all of it is Christian edition. Maybe all the lore we know about around this time, about all this Loki and Thor, Odin, maybe Ragnarok, maybe all of that is Christian edition. Christian came up with all of this. Who know, Who knows? There is no knowledge from the past, damn. ...in one 14th century attestation of Ragnarok that mentions that there's this god of gods who can't be named by the skalds and created everything and comes to the surviving Aesir after Ragnarok and is only ever referred to as Fimboltir, which literally just means mighty god and is only used as an epithet for Odin outside this specific context. Scholars mostly agree that this whole there was another god the whole time and they're super cool and we can't say their name and also they were cooler than all the other Aesir and they created the whole universe is probably an extremely obvious bit of retroactive Christianization, but the real frustration is without. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, there are these gods because you know, in in uh, I don't know much about Christian religion, but I'm pretty sure there's you know the one main god, and there's the son who's basically Jesus, and you know things like that. So there's one main god in Christian uh, uh, basically religion, while in this there are Aesir's multiple gods like Odin, Thor, and things like that. So Christian came up and they came like, yeah, these these are gods in a way, sure, but these are not the main god. These are just, you know, uh, the children of the main god. Something. There is one main god who created everything, that Christian type of version. So they added it that. That makes sense earlier sources to compare to, it's almost impossible to tell for sure what else might be a similar retcon. And this really gives us trouble when it comes to Loki, who has a tendency to get rewritten as actually Satan due to his role in triggering Ragnarok and also his general bad attitude. Many later translations of the edit- Yeah, we saw the, you know, the, I reacted to the latest uh, video from this Loki. It was an awesome video and all the points that Red make make sense. I mean, Loki is portrayed as evil, but he is really not. What other Aesir's? They seems more evil than the Loki. ...will go out of their way to call Loki a serpent, an epithet that he never has outside of that context. So it can be hard to tell how much of Loki's genuinely malicious attitude is a later addition, or if he was just supposed to be some kind of relatively harmless mischief maker in the original version. The fact is, aside from killing Baldur, Loki mostly just causes problems on purpose and then gets cartoonishly walloped by the consequences. He's not some glamorous prince of darkness, he's a Looney Tunes antagonist. And very few <laughs> stories illustrate this better than that time he nearly got his head cut off for no reason. So our story begins as so many do, with Loki getting bored and deciding to make trouble. And for today's zany scheme, he decides to cut off Sif's hair. Now, two things about Sif. One, her long golden hair was one of her most striking characteristics and possibly representative of fields of golden wheat representing a fertility aspect to her divinity. And two, she's married to Thor. So neither of them take this sudden hairstyle adjustment very well, and Thor promises to break every bone in Loki's body unless he finds a way to fix it. So Loki runs off to the dwarves, who in Norse mythology are magical smiths capable of crafting some pretty incredible things. Loki commissions them to make Sif some replacement hair, and they craft
Why did he cut off her hair to begin with, Thor? <laughs> Thor be like, oh, this has to be the goddamn Loki. He didn't even see it happen, and he just knew that it's gonna be Loki. <laughs> a set of magic golden hair that'll grow just like the real thing once she puts it on. And then I guess they get bored or something because they also take the time to forge the legendary spear Gungnir and the legendary boat, oh god, Skithblathnir, <sighs> whose most noteworthy quality is its ability to fold up and fit into a pocket when not in use. But I guess when there's no one else around to make trouble for, Loki will make problems for himself because he makes a bet with Brock the dwarf that his brother Sindri can't make three artifacts even cooler than the ones they'd already made. The wager is Loki's head, and with the stakes needlessly elevated, Brock and Sindri get to work. Loki wastes no time in cheating, obviously, and turns into a stinging fly to distract Brock while he works the bellows. But Brock stays stoic throughout the forging of the first two artifacts, and only momentarily cracks to swat at him when they're prepping the metal for the third one, causing some of the iron to become unusable. With the three artifacts forged, Loki, Brock, and Sindri head to Asgard to present the goods. Thor and Sif are very satisfied with the hair, Odin is happy to have a new spear, and Freyr gets the amazing collapsible boat. Then Brock and Sindri unveil the three bonus artifacts. The first is a golden boar named Gullenbursty that can run over water or air and also glows in the dark. The second is a magic ring for Odin called Draupnir that drops eight copies of itself every nine days. And finally, the third artifact is a hammer that they present to Thor, capable of incredible feats of smiting that'll never miss its target and is guaranteed to return to the hand when thrown. The only flaw in it is a slightly shortened handle, but despite this shortcoming, Thor is extremely happy with the newly forged Mjolnir, and they all agree that this artifact- Loki is the reason why Thor has his hammer? What? Again, like we see the Loki video from the, you know, the latest video, Loki. In there we see that how Loki is the reason why, you know, Aesir gets lots of things, like, you know, Aesir basically sends Loki to fix things. So in here we can see how Loki is the reason why Aesir got all this cool shit. Thor's hammer is because of Loki. Doesn't matter how he, his mischief caused it or not or whatever, he's the reason why they have this, right? And this is ridiculous. Is the greatest of them all. So Loki realizes he just lost the bet and promptly skedaddles, although Thor catches up to him pretty quickly and retrieves him. Then when Brock moves to cut off his head, Loki's like, Aha! Ho hold on! I said you could have my head, but I never said anything about you taking my neck. Brock is pretty unimpressed, but he does manage a compromise. Loki keeps his head, but the dwarves do sew his mouth shut first. It doesn't last long, of course, but that was probably the quietest afternoon Asgard had seen in a long time. You gotta know when to hold him. Can Thor be more of a dick? I mean, you know, his wife got the hair, he even got the hammer, everybody got cool shit. Rather than helping Loki, they, you know, he's helping the, those two other guys to have his head cut off or something. Damn. Seriously, I'm seeing this entire mythology very differently after reacting the past two videos. This Loki is very general video of Loki. Like, Aesir's are dicks, and Loki is the, I guess, good guy, in a way. Damn. Alright, that was Loki's Wager, this was a great video. By all the sarcastic production, it's just a great channel. Alright people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction I did, there's a link in the description, check out the cast, the playlist, check out the end cards, and... I guess I'll see you next time. And if you want me to react to some video from this channel, or what video you want me to react, react to next, I guess, comment down. Because there's so many videos, I don't know which one to react to next, so I guess comment down. And yeah, I'll see you next time.